we have arrived to the point when we are supposed to choose what we call a research approach. And here we have three possibilities. We can have deductive research approach, inductive research approach, and abductive research approach. Now, even though that there are three choices, you, if you are a bachelor or a master's student, you will most likely end up with a deductive approach and maybe inductive approach. You are very unlikely to end up with abductive approach because these kind of researches simply take much longer time than is the time that you have dedicated to write your thesis. And now when, when you are thinking about these three approaches, the idea is very simple. When you are doing a research, you have two things. You have a data and you have theories. Theories are basically included in your literature review and data is what you will collect. Now, these three approaches are telling us basically how are we treating these two entities. If we are going to do deductive approach, we will go from theories to data. If we have inductive approach, we will go from data to theories. And if we have abductive approach, it's very uh, similar to inductive. We are also going from data to theories, but it's a little bit more complicated. I will come back to that later. So let's start off with describing the most simple research approach, which is deductive. It's so simple because your task is to simply find a theories, let's say some very well known and generally defined theories, and trying to apply them to a specific phenomena and your data will then either approve or disapprove these theories that you have tried to apply. And both of these outcomes will be valuable. And I mean, I see a lot of confusion. People often think that deductive approach cannot provide anything new, but that's not true. You know, even when you will try to apply these theories, you take theory first and then the data, you can come up with something new. And this is also what happened to us when we were writing our research. We, we took some theories uh, to, the, to the specific phenomena and found out, okay, these theories do not work. And immediately as we were rejecting the old theories, we have started to think, okay, we can do it this way, we can do it that way. So don't worry, when you are doing a deductive approach, you still can come up with something new and valuable. As I mentioned, the second choice is to have inductive approach. Here, you go for data first and then you just try to formulate the theory. So it's exactly the other way around than the deductive approach. Now, inductive approach is really cool and it sounds really cool that you can formulate your own theories. Yes, it is true, but on the other hand, it's much harder to manage. It's much harder from a methodological perspective to justify that you are doing everything correctly as you should. Now, there is another, another problem with inductive research and that is that Truly inductive research does not take any theories as, a, as its background. You just have to start writing from scratch. And I have read many academic articles and I have seen maybe just two or three truly inductive academic papers. And one of them, which was the most gorgeous one that I have seen, did not have a single reference to other literature and it was amazing paper but it took, I think, 10 years to construct that academic paper. So you will most likely not end up with truly inductive approach. What you can end up with is some sort of a mixed, I think it's called mix of induction and deduction, that in the beginning you take some very little amount of theories, you go into the field and you try to gather a lot of data from which you will formulate your own theories. So you have some theories in the early beginnings of your research, but it's still considered to be sort of inductive approach. So be very careful about this. Finally, we have abductive approach, and this is a really tricky concept to grasp. Now, abductive approach is very close to inductive in a sense that we are going from data to theories. But in inductive approach, it is assumed that you have possessed all of the relevant data to construct the theories. While in abductive approach, you are assumed to have just enough data to formulate some theories which might be correct or which should be correct. Now, an example of abductive reasoning or abductive approach is medical diagnosis. I mean, when you are at a doctor and you tell some symptoms, you are having a headache, you have some skin problems, then this doctor does not have all of the information about you, just 
hopefully enough information uh, to give you a correct answer of what the problem is. Again, uh, another example of abductive reasoning is when a policeman comes to a criminal case. I mean, a policeman or a detective does not have all of the information about what happened, but just some limited amount of information from which uh, this uh, policeman will try to have a conclusion of what happened. And this is the same with research. If you have abductive research, you try to collect enough information to formulate solid enough theories. It's a very tricky concept to grasp, so I hope I simplified it correctly. All right, those were the three approaches that you can choose from. As I already mentioned to you, I recommend uh, mostly the deductive approach. Maybe consider inductive if it sounds interesting for you and looking forward to see you in the next videos.